Welcome to the lesson on model training. Now let's start building our model. First, we will start with the k-nearest neighbors algorithm. First, we will create an empty list with the name train scores and another list with name test scores. We will obtain the optimal k value for the k-nearest neighbors algorithm. We are choosing k values from 1 to 15. Thus, for each k value from 1 to 15, we will run the knn algorithm. After running the algorithm for all these values, find scores corresponding to them. For this, we are creating a loop. In this for loop, k values are from 1 to 15. We use k neighbors classifier to train the model. We have created an instance of the knn classifier. We have trained the model using the fit method on the x train and y train. For i in range 1 to 15, our model will try models from 1 to 15, and it will select the best neighbor. And then, we are appending the scores of models to these test scores and train scores lists. Let's run the cell. So we have created the loop. And we have stored scores in the train scores list and test scores list. Let's check the training scores list. The maximum value is 1. That is 100% accuracy. Let's check the testing scores list. The maximum value is 0.76562. That is 76.562% accuracy. Now, we will find the k value corresponding to these maximum values. So now we will see the maximum of this train score. And we will check the number of neighbors it has. Let's run the cell. So the maximum train score is 100%. Here, we got k value 1. And let's check the k value corresponding to the maximum test score. So let's run the cell. We got the maximum test score of 76.56 when k is equal to 11. So, we cannot go with the training score. Let's go with the testing score. So here we got 76.56% accuracy. So here we got the number of neighbors is 11. Let's create a plot to check the best training score and testing score. Now, we will draw seaborne line plot. Seaborne line plots depict the relationship between continuous and categorical values also in a continual data point format. We are creating a figure using the plt.figure method. We use the sns.line plot to draw the graph. Let's run the cell. Here, we can see that the blue color line is the training score. And the orange color is the test score. Here the k value 11 has good accuracy. We are getting a 100% training score for k equals 1. I think this may be because of overfitting. But here, we can see that for k equals 11, we have crossed 75% of accuracy. So let's use k equals 11 and again build a model. So, we fit the model on x train and y train. And then we are predicting on x test and y test. Now let's plot the decision boundary. Let's check the plot. Remember, the k nearest neighbor algorithm is based on the local geometry of the distribution of data. A classifier is linear if its decision boundary on the feature space is a linear function. In general, positive and negative examples are divided by a hyperplane. With KNN, you don't have a hyperplane in general. Here, we can see that the decision boundary is nonlinear. So here we can see that few values are mixed. Here one in orange color indicates a person has diabetes. And zero, the blue color means a person doesn't have diabetes. The boundary line is not accurate here. Let's proceed further. Let's create a confusion matrix. So this is the confusion matrix. So here, this is a true positive, and this is a false positive. Here, this is a true negative, and this is a false negative. So in total, we had 89 as 1. But the model predicted 54 correctly and Mies classified 35. Here we had 167 as 0. And the model predicted 142 correctly and Mies classified 25. Let's run this classification report. Here we can see that these are correlated. So I will explain to you, here we can see 89, which is 54 plus 35. And here, we have 167, which is 142 plus 25. So this is 89, and this is 167. So here, these are true positive, and these are false positive. Here, this is a true negative, and this is a false negative. Here, the total was 167 values where the label was 0, but the model predicted is only 142 and it misclassified 25. Here the total 89 values were 1. But the model classified is only 54, and it misclassified 35. So here, 0 means a patient doesn't have diabetes. And 1 means the patient has diabetes. So here we can see that we have precession for 0 is 80. And its recall is 0 0.85. And we have F1 score of 0 0.83. And for label 1, we have a precision of 0 0.68. 
and we have a recall of 0.61. And we have an F1 score of 0.64. Here, we have 167 total labels as 0 in the test set because we are predicting this on the test set. And we have 89 labels as 1 in this test set. And we got 0.77 as accuracy for these 256 labels. Now let's check ROC and AUC curve. What is AUC, ROC curve? AUC stands for area under the ROC curve. That is, AUC measures the entire two-dimensional area underneath the entire ROC curve. The area under the curve AUC, is the measure of the ability of a classifier to distinguish between classes. What is the ROC curve? The ROC curve shows the trade-off between sensitivity or true positive rate, and specificity or false positive rate. Let's run the cell. And let's plot the curve. Let's check the ROC score also. So the ROC score is 0.81. And here we can see this ROC curve. So this is the curve that plots DPR against FPR at various threshold values. And it essentially separates signals from noise. The area under the curve AUC is the measure of the ability of a classifier to distinguish between classes. And we use this as a summary of the ROC curve. With this ROC curve, we can see that we have a mix of labels. This curve tells us that how the model is predicting. We can see whether the model predicts zeros as zeros or ones as ones. The higher the area under the curve means, the better the model performance. It can accurately predict the patients have diabetes or don't have diabetes. So now, let's use Grid Search CV. What is the use of Grid Search CV? Grid Search CV helps to loop through predefined hyperparameters and fit your model on your training set. And let's try a few more KNN models. So in the Grid Search CV, now we will give models from K values range from 1 to 50. So here, in this Grid Search CV, we will use this parameter. And it will create different models from the K value range of 1 to 50 with separate parameters. Based on parameters, it will select the best model. Let's run the cell. It will take some time to get the best model. Here, we can see the best score of 77.2. We got the best parameters. So here we got neighbors 25. So I think we also got the same accuracy. So here also, we got the same accuracy with 11 neighbors. See here. Here, we used 11 neighbors. So, approximately we got the same accuracy with this. In this project, you can use various other models also. You can use the random forest. You can use logistic regression. You can use support vector machines. You can try different models, and you can predict which model works better. As this is a health domain project, it is the key to have a data set with quality data. Domain expertise people should involve in the implementation of this type of project. Suppose, you don't know the health domain, and you want to build a machine learning or data science project. You deployed it in the cloud. So without domain expertise, you cannot do that. You don't know the different values and different terms used in the health domain. It is good if you gain some knowledge in that field, or else work with some domain expertise people. This project is learning based. You cannot deploy this project anywhere, because we have a small data set. So, happy learning. Keep learning with us.